Heute mal ein Video zur Ausnahme des Tages über Softwarelizenzen. Lol. Nee, aber heute haben wir wirklich was Spezielles und zwar Hardware-Lizenzen. Äh, auch. Also es geht auch um Hardware, also auch um Software, so wie Hardware. Was ähm, ja, was ich eigentlich jetzt nicht unbedingt sehen wollte, aber ähm, es geht auch um BSD und naja, äh, jetzt viele Leute <lacht> reden hören, die jetzt nicht wirklich BSD waren. Deswegen dachte ich mir, ist es doch eine gute Idee, auch aus deren Sicht was zu hören. Ähm, deswegen BSD Lizenzen heute und zwar Running BSD äh, Oh, hier ist ein Lavasee. Geil. Uh, running BSD Licensed Software on uh, BSD Licensed Hardware. Ein Vortrag von Marius Strobel. Ich glaube, der ist sogar deutsch. Vom Reinpieken her will ich jetzt mal vermuten, dass es ein deutscher Akzent war. Ähm, ich brauche kurz wackeln. Ja, äh, ähm, ja, ich dachte irgendwie in der letzten, vorletzten Folge schon, dass es äh, fertig wird, die, die Goldfarm, aber irgendwie so langsam wie ich hier vorankomme, wird es wahrscheinlich noch ein bisschen dauern. Und ähm, genau, das ist von der Euro BSD Con 2012. Ähm, Ähm, ja, boah, also das dauert ewig, bis ich immer auf Play drücken kann. Ne? Euro BSD Con, ähm, IP des Servers ist in der Beschreibung oder es hat halt auch alternativ die Domain silicon.com. Link zum Video ist auch in der Beschreibung. Das ist ein Video von 2013 von der Euro BSD, vom EuroBSD Con Channel. Der hat 1000 Abonnenten. Ja, um, yeah, let's go. So. Hello everyone. Oh, sorry, the loud. I guess it's time to start the talk. Falling. Oh, well, thanks. Um, so, of you reading the, yeah, especially for BSD source commit my mailing list probably know me best for working on the Spark 64 port and uh, also generally on. Yeah, on klingt doch sehr deutsch, oder? Was sagt die? What that's not what this talk is about. Apart from working on FreeBSD, I'm currently also a master student and a scientific staff member of the University of Applied Re uh, Sciences in Regensburg. And as Borla said, I had to work on a research project um, involving so-called Ethernet um, microcontroller reference design boards. And these boards turned out to be rather interesting. I decided to delve some more into them um, beyond what was actually needed for that project. And that's what this talk is about, finally. So before I start, I still want to set some things straight first off. I know... Also, here, kein kurzer... Uh Kurzer Exkurs hier, also absolut kein Rant an, an die English Skills von diesem äh, Präsentator, aber ich finde es immer wieder erstaunlich, wie, wie Leute so einen harten Akzent haben können und dabei so viele Wörter kennen. Also ich meine, ich könnte niemals so flüssig einen Vortrag halten auf Englisch wie er, ähm, aber ich würde die paar Wörter, die ich halt sprechen kann, deutlich, äh, also ein bisschen weniger äh, akzental rüberbringen können und ich, ich weiß nicht, wie man so so viele englische Wörter und so einen englischen Workflow reinhauen kann, ohne dabei ähm, seinen, seinen Akzent zu verlieren. Ich frage mich, was für ein, was für ein English Learning Flow äh, man da haben muss. Aber ja, finde ich nur interessant immer wieder, wenn ich, wenn ich Leute höre zum das nicht nur Deutsch, auch also in jeglicher Sprache. Vielleicht, also nur bei Deutsch kann ich es eher nachvollziehen, weil, äh, <lacht> naja, weil ich halt Deutsch bin. Wenn jetzt irgendein so ein Asiate kommt mit einer ganz anderen Sprache, dann ähm, weiß ich natürlich nicht, wie hart das ist, von diesen, äh, 
von diesem anderen Klang herzukommen, weil, naja, äh, keine Ahnung, chinesisch oder so ist schon, äh, schon was, ne, ein ganz anderer Kaliber, ach, ich wollte Holz holen, er ist schon ein ganz anderer Kaliber halt als, ähm, als der Unterschied zwischen Deutsch und ähm, Englisch. Ja, nee, nur, nur meine kleine äh, Verwunderung hier am Rande. Und dann würde ich sagen, weiter geht's. Aber natürlich absolut kein Hate und ich finde es super, dass er diesen Vortrag auf Englisch macht, obwohl er äh, deutschsprachig ist, ähm, damit halt mehr Leute das verstehen. Das ist immer sehr nett. Ja, super. So viel dazu. Weiter geht's. Affiliated with the Ignite GmbH, which sells these boards. I just regularly bought them. I don't get no money from them. Also from me, as it's rather um, yeah, unusual to give a talk without writing a paper. Um, so I ended up with having a lot of information in the slides and the whole talk is a bit more workshop style. I hope that's okay for you. Um, also this is my first regular talk at a BSTCon, a free, uh, Euro BSTCon, so I hope, hopefully you bear with me. Um, as you can see here, I have a FreeBSD logo here, but the talk isn't solely about FreeBSD, but at least uh, in some way FreeBSD centric, so that's why I kept that logo from the slide templates. So to finally begin, this is a yeah, rather intentionally crowded slide to Introduce some abbreviations. Uh, it's from a novel talk I gave on yeah, introduction to oh my God, um, it's system prototyping. Probably for this audience, I don't really ex need to explain these abbreviations. Um, except maybe for if you're not familiar with embedded systems with JTAG, which is um, debugging interface, um, but also used for flashing microcontroller boards. And an alternative to that is in system program. In system program via an SBR interface. So what are these Oops. Yeah, Ethernet boards? That's a whole family you can see here. That's now a bit unhandy because I put away the mic. Ah, sound. Yeah, you may wonder there's no Ethernet 4. I don't know what happened to it. There's just one, two, th three, and five. There never was a four. So Ethernet 1 is uh, designed from 2004 and uh, still sold. It costs about um, 85 euros today. And uh, Ethernet 5 is uh, the 2011 design currently sold for 185 euros. Um, obviously, it's way more, but for example, a Raspberry high costs, but also the targeted audience of these boards is different than that other boards. For example, the Raspberry Pi doesn't even have an, an RTC chip, a real fun clock chip on it. I'll talk about uh, a bit more about the hardware of these, bar, uh, of these boards in the next slides, but uh, some things noteworthy here is the Ethernet 2 is basically the same as the Ethernet 1, except for more RAM, uh, RS485 interface, and uh, it's also certified for the full industrial temperature, temperature range from, I think, minus 40 to plus 85 degrees Celsius. Yes, that's right. And um, so Ethernet 5 is really interesting. This was the first member of this family to also have uh, USB connectors. It's uh, possible to power it over Ethernet. It also has, has things like an uh, um, image sensor interface, and it's also certified for an extended temperature range. In general, uh, the operating system intended to be run on these boards is called NATOS, which I'll introduce later. Um, however, for the Ethernet 5, the Ignite GBR also uh, is distributing a Linux uh, kernel and yeah, user land based on the Angstrom distribution. Uh, but uh, necessary, necessary patches for uh, Linux are not in the Linux mainline free. Okay. So comparing these, uh, is not one and two. I said, as I said before, are based on the same microcontroller, which is an Atmega uh, 128 from Atmel AVR architecture, 8-bit. As you can see here, it's up to Ethernet 3, it's uh, rather tiny in RAM and flash, so really uh, intended for embedded systems. And uh, with uh, Ethernet 5, uh, which finally is um, yeah, rather 
powerful ARM9 based microcontroller. They put a lot of uh, sort of uh, relatively a lot of RAM and, and flash there. You can also, yeah, for example, run Linux and other interesting operating systems there. Uh, in terms of frequencies, one and two are running with about 50 megahertz. Uh, if you don't know, need exact uh, board rates, you can also run at 16 megahertz. So three clocks at about 74 megahertz, and the five is 180 megahertz. Uh, flash on the Ethernet five is yeah divided into three parts, or there are three components. An Intel internal one used uh, solely for the um, first stage bootloader. Uh, four megabytes external one for uh, configuration data, it's the rest of the bootloader, and uh, another S applications as well as kernels. And there's another one gigabyte flash chip intended to be used for a uh, file system. Just comparing these uh, boards, um, yeah, there's not that many to say, that much to say about that slide. Um, you don't need to wonder why, uh, also based on the same microcontroller, uh, so Ethernet 2 has more GPO lines because there is an additional multiplexer on it. And yeah, so for M for NVRAM configuration data, here are, are in brackets because it's shared with the, or it's the same, actually the same ch flash chip also used for the bootloader stuff and kernels and applications. So, uh, if you're looking into embedded systems, obviously power consumption is interesting. That's what I measured in reality. For the Ethernet 1, it's about one watts with the application I had to use or I developed as part of the said research project. Um, and the Ethernet 5 booted from an SD card with also an Ethernet link up is about two watts. So now the real interesting thing about these boards, in my opinion, is that uh, all layouts and schematics are um, distributed under BSD style license, in this case you see the license of uh, the Ethernet 1. It's the same for the rest of them. I actually intended to use it, these schematics, to build my own version of an Ethernet 2. Unfortunately, that project was cancelled. Um, yeah, these are all the links uh, for the respective layers and schematic files for the EDPCB design software. Um, the reason I collected them here is that they're a bit tricky to find because unfortunately most, most of them are only uh, found on the uh, German version of the homepage but not the English one. Um, something I forgot to say, uh, one nice feature of these families also that they all have the yeah, pin compatible expansion port and there are some ready-made expansions you can find, for example the MediaNut which uh, is an MPCU decoder but if you Google around, you will also find uh, another project like uh, GPP, GPID, bus interface used for connecting measurement instruments. There's also a template available, um, layouts in schematics template, if you want to build your own extensions. Yeah, so what about NADOS? Uh, it's a yeah, rather simple and small, but rather usable real-time operating system. It provides all features you uh, expect, um, uh, expect for a real-time operating system like cooperative multitasking, especially deterministic interrupt response times and so on. It has support for all the typical communication protocols for IP, that's unfortunately currently only IP version 4, but uh, IPv6 is in the works. Um, one nice thing also is that sort of user land, which is in real user land because it's using the same aerospace is largely POSIX compliant. As you'll say later, it's also uh, rather simple to get used to it. Um, and I'm for myself also ported um, software or applications between um, yeah, NATO S and, and POSIX, and yeah, this is straightforward. And of course, oh, NATO S is also beast no hate, aber One nice feature is also that the kernel is modular and like a library. So if you build an application based on it, you don't have uh, yeah, a kernel with un, or a, yeah, application with unused part. It's only links in what actually is used. Uh, more features, obviously, uh, all the hardware of the Ethernet family of boards is supported. Uh, however, they also support some additional microcontrollers and uh, additional platforms. For example, actually the Game Boy Advanced is a supported platform. 
some resources of, for another as you should be aware of is yeah obviously the sources and uh, yeah as of now of uh, the current stable version is 4.10.3 which is also the first uh, first stable version to include um, support for previously a host as a host but uh, it's actually trivial to add support for other hosts like yeah NetBSD and OpenBSD and so on. So wiki is also rather good with lots of examples, background information and so on. And one real, really useful and, and usable thing is the API reference for NatOS which explains about uh, yeah, any function you can call in detail. If you want to build NatOS for Ethernet 1 and 2, um, on in this case FreeBSD as a host, you need supporting FreeBSD ports. Um, I didn't actually look whether Net and OpenBSD has the same ports, but I assume they have this or rather, rather common ports. First two are the two chain for the RVR microcontroller. Uh, so you need additionally a libc for RVR, RVR, AVR. Uh, you need uh, typically a tool called AVR Dude for flashing these boards, and yeah, you also need some some glue stuff sort of. Um, it's um, talking about Lua. It's uh, also possible to actually run Lua scripts on these boards um, under NatOS, but that's something I haven't tried myself so far. Building, uh, yeah, installing NatOS is rather straightforward. After you download the source and uh, yeah, you run configure. Two things you should uh, yeah, disable, in my opinion, is uh, the graphical uh, version of NatConf. Um, I don't think you actually need really need them. The command line version is basically fully uh, sufficient. And uh, uh, using the or adding the graphical versions just uh, just as a lot of uh, dependency bloat. Another thing uh, that's Causing additional dependencies is uh, NAPS discovery tool. Um, basically, that's a tool you can run to discover boards via Ethernet and uh, configure static, uh, static IP addresses of these boards, then used with NatOS. If you use that feature, you actually yeah, need to build NAP discovery. Um, apart from that, you probably can save or spare that uh, dependencies. One thing you need to do is after installing it is to add the uh, add the uh, binary path to your yeah path environment. So two tools can be called. Um, in general, if you then want to build or yeah stuff for uh, Ethernet one and two, there are um, two methods: a so-called infree method and a build tree method. Infree method is sort of the old way, uh, like we configured kernels in, in FreeBSD, where you see user source uh, on uh, MD64, for example, conf, and then run config on the kernel config file, change the object directory and build it. So it's basically uh, building the objects within the source tree. The build infree method is, is something like the CD to user source and run make build kernel and build world. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the entry method uh, yeah, shown here is uh, more appropriate if you want to um, change NATOS itself because you have don't uh, constantly have to change directories from source tree to object or build tree. So if you want to configure NATOS for Ethernet 1 and 2, you typically run the NAT setup um, script, which is an interactive script. That's uh, on the zero getting for Ethernet 1. This is pre pretty much uh, what you um, use unchanged. Um, just depending on the ISP programmer you're using, you probably um, want to select another ISP protocol. In this case, I'm using the USB SP uh, protocol, which is rather common. You'll find several um, yeah. ISP programmers using that protocol, typically self-built. This is one of these. It's a um, yeah, USB to ISP programmer self-built. You can get the board for free from Harker Lighter Button if you send them stamps, and then there's about five to six euros in components. The only problem with this you need to bootstrap it because it's um, also using a microcontroller itself. So if you have to for one time borrow an um, ISP programmer. If you have run that NAT setup script, this results in a bunch of 
files to be created, you probably should check in if you're using a local uh, source repository. There's one copy currently. Um, NotOS 4.10.3 uh, officially only supports GCC 4.3.2. However, um, currently in 3B port 3 we have 4.5.1 and they deprecated uh, a bit of stuff currently still used by NotOS, so you have to manu manually um, yeah, add a hack to the user com file, which is um, adding to the hardware definition for these two macro definitions and also these flags. Those are currently deprecated uh, and not yet in not always replaced functions are uh, still available. And you also need a workaround for work in the not always build system, which is the last line. Um, my fix for that got accepted upstream, but it's obviously not not yet committed. Yeah, so to finally compile not to S, uh, you just run gmake clean all install. Uh, one caveat here is also if you're changing NatOS sources yourself, you have to rerun that last step and relink your application because on uh, NatOS build system unfortunately doesn't uh, catch changes in NatOS with both. So uh, if you then want to compile applications, there are several uh, example uh, applications uh, brought with even, uh, the NatOS sources in NatApp. For example, an HDB daemon or an RS232 terminal server program. You just, just a CD to set um, directory, run again uh, gmake, basically all on it. And once you have done that, you can just run gmake, gmake, gmake to graphical flash it make or or via an ISP programmer. Uh, you have to watch out to have the necessary uh, permissions on the uh, und inwiefern ist dieses Video überhaupt über Licensing? Das ist ja irgendwie ein Bild-Tutorial, oder? Ja, das ist ein typisches Hello World Beispiel, wie es aussieht wie in NatOS, also in NatOS Application. As I said before, it's rather familiar. Uh, if you know POSIX, uh, you have um, yeah underscore IO control uh, for uh, yeah settings. Uh, in this case, uh, UART speed for the output device, and you have also stuff like uh, F open and regular open and so on. <coughs> uh, here you also see how you register hardware devices within uh, NATOS. In this case, uh, you have some crew for the uh, um, debug or the con standard console interface. Uh, the following two parameters uh, in general are address and uh, interrupt. Uh, you need these parameters, for example, for the Mac controller, but not for tier devices. Can you make it more dunkler? Creating make files for NATO is also rather simple. Basically, it's similar to the BSD2 MK files. You basically just have to define the project variable. It has to match, and in this case, in hello, hello world C. Uh, if you have additional sources, you would uh, add them here. Um, the rest you can just copy and paste. If you do that, you just have to watch out that uh, the RM lines here begin with uh, tabs and not with bases. So, so far about uh, using NATOS for uh, Ethernet 1 and 2, for 3 and 5 we basically need just another build chain, uh, uh, tool chain, which are the ARM11 binuties and ARM11 GC. Uh, you get these uh, within FreeBSD these ports by uh, combining the cross uh, binuties and GCC ports, setting target arch and the target ABI. Then, yeah, installing other is, is the same as for one and two. Uh, yeah, exactly the same. The same. Then, uh, in this case, I'm uh, yeah, showing how the build parameters works. It's a bit more complicated than the other setup one. You basically yeah, run not configure with a bunch of options, which then creates a build tree for NatOS itself, which is called not build. Yeah, in this case, 5.0.f. Uh, unfortunately, again, you need a hack uh, to make it work with the current FreeBSD ports, which is to change in NatConf MK is the name of the target binaries. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure about the background here. Uh, apparently, GCC and the Binutis guys 
decided to give yeah give some different names, and so uh, freebie sports haven't really caught up of that, and uh, you currently have to do that by hand. Maybe it's just a better way to use the new lip stuff. And um, I'm not sure how the call for this called new lip. No, yeah, whatever. Uh, maybe it's a better way, but for now it's a hex that's working. Uh, on the uh, NAPCONF MK file says, uh, yeah, automatically create it, um, don't change, just ignore it. Yeah, once you have done that, you again can just uh, change the build tree for NADOS, run gmake uh, all again, and you end up with NADOS compiled in the build tree. Then you have to do the same for an application's build tree, also running uh, NAPCONF with set arguments. Same hack again required here. And then if you want to build also example applications, you just uh, see to the NetApp um, build tree directory, run gmake again, and this results in a lot of uh, .bin files you can then uh, use on your Ethernet 5, basically also similarly for, for Ethernet 3. So how do you flash your netboot on Ethernet 5? Uh, basic procedure is to use TFTP, so at you at least uh, need a TFTP server. I'll also advise to configure support via DHCP, such as the snippet you will need for the IC DHCP daemon. Uh, that's especially handy if you uh, later on would like to netboot FreeBSD in order to give it the root path to the NFS, NFS root directory. So yeah, running TFTP daemon is um, rather straightforward um, currently. With uh, the BSD operating systems, all you typically have to change in the INAD conf is the path to the uh, NFS root, um, root direct boot directory you're intending to use. And oh my God! Also this video is hard. Leute, wir müssen jetzt hier, glaube ich, abbrechen, oder? Ich weiß nicht. Also auf jeden Fall muss ich mal kurz nachschauen, was da in die Mitte kommt. Ich glaube nämlich, da kommt ein Schildkröten-Ei oder so ein Schmarrn rein. Und, ähm, ja, das habe ich natürlich jetzt nicht hier. Hm. Vorbereitet, wie ich bin. Die sind wahrscheinlich ganz praktisch, die sind auch ganz nice. Und dann okay, so, ähm, ja, also. War das das Tutorial, was ich geschaut habe? Ja, was haben wir in der Mitte hier? Ja, da soll echt irgend so ein scheiß Ei rein. Woher soll man das denn kriegen? Was ist das für ein Ei? Was bist du für ein Ei? Turtle Egg, ja. Okay, dachte ich mir doch. Die Frage ist nur, wo kriegt man das? Turtle X can be obtained in the inventory using tools with the silk touch enchantment. If broken without enchantment push by a piston, a gravity effect was Beating. After two turtles have been with the seagrass. Ah, okay. Also, wir brauchen seagrass. Die Frage ist nur, wo kriegen wir seagrass her? Ah, seagrass, das da. Kriegen wir wahrscheinlich auch mit der Schere. Okay, also Schere, seagrass. Okay, dann schauen wir das hier noch ein bisschen weiter. Dann suchen wir eine Turtle, dann brauchen wir eine Sick Touch und eine Zero Port of an Ethernet 5 with uh, 115 kpps and yeah, 8N1. And and You'll see, um, typically see these two messages, uh, which first line is uh, Slam Boot, which is a first um, stage bootloader residing within that uh, integrated uh, flash. 
Second is uh, good stuff. That's also as the as the overall pointed out, we are a bit cheating with my title because yeah, so far we have not OS which be still license and uh, the hardware which is be still license, but you put this unfortunately be a license. Then you get a bit of uh, Aha, cheating with the title. Like stuff. Ich merk schon. And finally you get an auto boot sequence if you uh, yeah actually hit any key to, to uh, stop it get to the U-boot prompt and yes, then you can configure and they um, do different things. For example, alternatively to using using DHCP, you can um, set static IP address and a static IP address for the TFTP server. With the safe and common yeah, you can uh, nicht save this <laughs> environment variables and also with printf you can print all the environment. Euch jetzt in Obsidian von oben noch mitnehmen können. und eine ersatz pickaxe natürlich auch ersatz schwer alternatively to netbooting you can also store set in the respective respective partition in the 4 megabytes external flash using the tftp install nut script then yeah flashing takes a bit but afterwards uh, you can uh, yeah also run it uh, again one time from the flash using the flash boot not script or again set boot command to do that every time you power it on. Yes, that's for not to add so far. As for FreeBSD on ESNOT 5, uh, yeah, I, as of set revisions, I added support to it. This is the last bits of, of support. Uh, it's also going to be in, in 9.1 release. Basically, uh, what it took to get FreeBSD running on Ethernet 5 was adding support for the Sun 9XE family of smart controllers. That was rather simple to do because we already support the core that is smart controllers are built on. Uh, so have just uh, okay. So the question is, where do we now put the small shield? Flash and apart from that, it's, it's basically the same. Ja, wir haben unterwegs ein paar gesehen, aber uh, boards, also not that hard to do. Then the real funny part was to fix a lot of drivers at, uh, yeah, say, rare buggy in FreeBSD, but also needed uh, workarounds for silicon bugs of, yeah, certain Atmel microcontrollers. Not only the Sam 9XE, but they also applying to other stuff. And, yeah, so most interesting stuff was the. Uh, uh, TVI is a two wire interface controller, how Atmel Corsair, Corsair ISQRC controller, which just had no chance of working anywhere at all before because it just doesn't, it didn't send a stop. I'll also like to thank uh, Ian Lepore from Symmetricom at this point, who especially contributed the uh, fixes required for MMC, but also did, yeah, contributed the uh, other bits of these fixes and, and reviewed, reviewed uh, several of them. All in all, this should make FreeBSD's first operating system, besides not OS, of course, to, so to support Ethernet 5 out of 3. As I said earlier, uh, there's official Linux support, but it's not in the Linux mainline. So, how do you compile uh, userland, FreeBSD userland for Ethernet 5? Basically, um, yeah. This example refers to 9.1, but it's also the same for head. It's straightforward how you build um, within a cross environment. Um, the only thing to watch out is especially the head to pass the DMALOC, uh, yeah, malloc production macro. 
uh, because otherwise uh, the malloc um, debugging support will just blow on 128 megabyte system out of uh, yeah the water sort of. Um, the default kernel configuration file I'm shipping with Bing FreeBSD is set up to do net booting. So if you don't want to do net booting but boot from an SD card instead, you have to replace in the kernel config file the above lines with a uh, root def name option. And yeah, once you have done that, you can uh, really build again. Uh, and uh, cross build and, and curl by again setting a target to arm, the giving the uh, kernel configuration um, na uh, config file name and run build kernel. Then once you have built world and curl for the Ethernet 5, uh, you have to for an NFF root to install that uh, yeah objects by running the install kernel, install world and distribution target. Again, straightforward as you do cross building, the only thing to watch out in this case is to set kernel underscore ko to kernel.bin because that's what you want to yeah, boot on the board and not the regular binary uh, called kernel. Afterwards, you probably want to disable send mail totally and enable SSHD on the board. It's uh, done via yeah, calling uh, sys comments and once yeah, I've done that. You basically finished with having an NFS root appropriate for Ethernet 5. I prepared that uh, for 9.1 RC2. Um, oh, das ist ein File. Oh mein Gott, haben wir hier damals and, uh, Sand geholt? Same for, um, hier haben wir damals Sand geholt. Ehre, Schildkröten, nice. Das ging ja schnell, schneller als gedacht. To power on the per peripherals on the board, you also need to set some variables uh, used by yeah, other parts of the U-Board support. In this Komm case, the dots ends are not really needed for uh, net booting, uh, just for flashing. But uh, the same so muss ich die jetzt uh, verfolgen oder wie funktioniert das? For, um, fl uh, flash ja. to flash later on. Die ist einfach mal in Burg gegangen. Then you have to create a sort of script to um, boot FreeBSD via TFTP and in the end save all the environment. Once okay, you muss have ich done that, uh, booting <laughs> FreeBSD via network is as simple as running... Brauchen die uh, Sand, FTP um das zu vergraben? FreeBSD Kann das sein? Or das wäre natürlich echt kritisch, weil hier gibt es gar nicht mehr so viel Sand. Haha, ha, fuck! Can again um, alter the boot command variable to do this automatically. Es ist natürlich echt ungünstig, dass ich die Schildkröten direkt bei der Sandfarm finde. Haha. <lacht> 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 via um, network or you can use one of those uh, MNCSD uh, adapters or readers or spoil or so serious for writing it and sein. connect it to your regular PC and do that stuff there. That's how you create then uh, yeah UFS partitioning and file system used for uh, FreeBSD and Ethernet 5 and once you have UFS it and, and mounted the file system on the SD card you yeah, sort of install regularly uh, the user land uh, bits built earlier by, ent uh, by either setting the dust here or copying what you have over. Then again, if you want to uh, boot from that card, you have to again um, 
create some magic, the first part up to uh, creating like FreeBSD is the same as as I've shown earlier for uh, uh, netbooting. Um, the only difference here is in this uh, THP install FreeBSD script and then a flash boot FreeBSD script. Once it's done, uh, you can run THP install FreeBSD to boot via THP or load via THP the kernel um, and then it's flashed, which takes a while, about, <coughs> I think, 20 to 30 seconds. Also, one problem here is um, that the Linux partition we are yeah, abusing for this is uh, limited to uh, 2.6 megabytes currently. Huh? That's a rather tight fit. And yeah, once you have FreeBSD on there, uh, it's a bit, in my opinion, simpler to flash this kernel. You can just use DD to that device. Yeah, as I said earlier, it takes a while to for both methods to complete. Uh, also, we have to watch out to uh, use uh, the right kernel for SD pooling. Um, as I said earlier, you have to set the root dev name as appropriate, and also we have to fetch the kernel.bin file for that. Again, I've prepared, prepared such a kernel, which you can download from people previous to your Once you have flushed uh, the kernel to the board, it's again simple to run flash boot FreeBSD. And again, by boot command ordering, you can do that automatically on boot. Yeah, some to-dos for it's not five, that's not that much stuff to do. Uh, currently we're missing a uh, drive with a power management controller, which allows to turn off certain parts of the board or peri peripherals on the board. Mm, it's, it's not hard to do. The main question is what will really happen if you just turn off the clock of the Ethernet controller. It's something to try and maybe uh, yeah, not provide. Then uh, getting new bolt loader to work is certainly very desirable. As I said earlier, uh, we currently have a um, um, tight match with the kernel in flash. Uh, using new boot loader would circumvent it, probably also um, speed up boot times quite a bit. Um, I only looked at it. Um, for a short time it didn't work out of the box, but uh, it could be that all that's required to get it working is to build a new boot loader image with uh, a config API stuff enabled. However, in general for BSD ARM, there's quite some stuff to do. The H, um, H drivers, um, network interface drivers of the embedded oh. Mac, uh, it should be approved for one. Uh, it's laid out for all the controllers which need to um, copy the received data to MBUS, uh, especially it's the same mine uh, version of my controllers. You can directly receive into MBUS, that's something you really want for speed. But also, uh, I discovered uh, reliability problems with the driver. Uh, for TCP, it's just working fine. However, for um, UDP, um, for example, when copy, copying large amounts of data via, uh, via NFS, um, it sometimes just vanishes and you can't recover. So I have no idea for what the problem really is, but it's also something that needs to be fixed, but isn't really business quite specific. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do in the SPI land. Um, Mainly, we're currently looking, uh, lacking a way to uh, let client device drivers say what the hardware uh, supports in speed. Um, currently, uh, we just can uh, assume that only the lowest one possible that is supported. We need a framework to tell uh, the upper layers what the maximum hardware really supports. Also, for the AT91 SPI controller implementation, there's some strange bug I haven't mentioned made down before that um, when actually using speed supported by the hardware or uh, yeah, higher speed supported by the hardware, I get, you get data corruption. So only uh, rocking variant currently is to uh, run it the uh, uh, lowest possible speed. That's also not very desirable. Uh, there's 
room for improvement in the machine-dependent bus DNA implementation, uh, especially regarding, regarding cache washing. There are some corner cases not quite currently. Uh, USB is rather problematic at that point in time. Um, some while ago there were some changes, changes which blow uh, the arm and push the port out of the water because um, it's not really using uh, bus games the way intended, but even before that breakage, uh, it wasn't stable on ARM. Um, it worked for simple stuff like uh, RS232 controllers, but uh, if you try to mount a file system or a file system via OSP, sooner or later that stuff blows up. Um, also, uh, thankfully, we finally got the NAND framework, and as I said earlier, the Internet 5 ports uh, provide one gigabyte of flash for a file system. That currently is not usable within FreeBSD, and yeah, we also need a driver to hook up the Atmel part with that framework. I haven't looked at it, it how complicated would it, would, uh, it be to yeah, implement that. I hopefully will to get it. We'll get to it sometime, or maybe it's not somewhere else. What else is there? Yeah, that's everything from my part so far. Um, I'd like to, yeah, thank the organizers to select my talk. Yeah, and as I said earlier, I am the core for also contributing some pixels here. Oh my gosh. Does anybody have any questions? Finden die sich. Leute, die sind ja so lang. Malloc production for 9.1? No, um, maybe I wasn't really clear about it. Uh, in the stable branches, we're uh, by default disabling it, but if you build head, as you probably know yourself, you really need that it won't work. I just wanted to give um, sort of a universal command which works for both stable and, and head branches. Sorry if it wasn't clear before. Wahrscheinlich sollte ich mal ein paar yeah. schlüpfen lassen, dann hat man mehr Schildkröten, oder? A lot of information in, in, in less time. As I said earlier, uh, it would be nice if I had a yeah, uh, chance to write a paper for it and put more information there. But uh, yeah, thanks to the video guys, uh, you can download the talk probably later and, and um, take your time to, to have a look at the slides and, and listen to the audio stream. Oh mein Gott, sind die viele Schildkröten. Jo. Dann, thanks for attending. Okay, ähm, ja, das äh, war dann der Vortrag, aus dem ich ungefähr circa gar nichts mitgenommen habe. Ey, ey. Ähm, aber, let's go. hier irgendwas bauen. Das ist wahrscheinlich äh, falsch Richtung, ne? Ich will irgendwie... darüber. Genau, die IP-Adresse zum Server findet ihr wie immer in der Beschreibung. Und äh, ein Link zu dem Video ist auch in der Beschreibung zu finden. Ich baue mir hier mal kurz so eine Base, damit ich hier ein bisschen auf K rumchillen kann und dann ein bisschen an diesen Schildkröten rumbreeden. Während ich jetzt die nächste Folge hochlade, werde ich einfach mal AFK gehen und ähm, <lacht> hier so ein bisschen Schildkrötenkram machen. Ne? Super, ich hoffe mal, dass mich hier diese Vögel nicht äh, finden und vernichten werden. Ähm, 
sind denn die eigentlich? Ist das, weil so viel geschlafen wurde? Wahrscheinlich kommen die jetzt nicht mehr. Aber ich sag dir, ein, zwei Nächte. Ah, da sind sie schon. Okay. Es könnte sein, dass ich hier sicher bin. Muss aber nicht sein. Okay. Ja, dann würde ich sagen, war es das für diese Episode. Und ähm, wir sehen uns in der nächsten.